football, all music, all the time. Welcome back for another episode of Blevins Nation Podcast. Life, it's what happens. So sit back, hold tight, and open up your ears, because the show starts right now. This is your host, Coach B, and I'm talking with Coach Perry, John Perry, head football coach of the Pearl Pirates at Pearl High School in Pearl, Mississippi, my hometown and Coach Perry's hometown. How's it going, Coach? I'm just going great. How are you? Oh, man. Ready for football to start back. I guarantee it's kind of depressing when it's over, isn't it? Uh, yes, way depressing. Um, and especially when you're looking for a, uh, a new gig. Um, I just haven't found my home up here. And, uh, right. So, uh, we'll see. What, um, well, hopefully you'll find something good. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Um, what, uh, give me a little background on you. I know you went to Pearl High School. Where'd you go to college? I graduated from Pearl and went to Hines Community College. Mm-hmm. Played football for two years, transferred from there, and went to Hardy University in Searcy, Arkansas, Division II program, who actually did really great this year. One of our one of my teammates took over as head football coach this year. They started out 0-3 and won 11 in a row and got beat the semifinals, so I was really proud of them. Uh, and then from there, I came back. My high school coach, Bruce Merchant, hired me at Pearl, mm-hmm. uh, stayed there with him for four years. He left, uh, Coach Bowles, Marcus Bowles came in and stayed with him two years, and he left and went to Wayne County yep. with Bobby Hall, and I went to Wayne County with them. Uh, after one year at Wayne County, Bobby Hall got the head job at Northeast uh, Community College up in Boonville, and I went with him up there for two years, and then he retired and actually went and did some other things, did a rental league, and. Murray State uh, for a couple of years. I went and got the head football job at Kosciuszko. Okay. Spent five years there, then came back to Pearl uh, as the head coach 10 years ago and uh, been here uh, ever since. And you said 10 years ago? 10 years ago, which is absolutely amazing that, you know, 10 years has passed. Uh, but, you know, it has. And, and then, you know, we've been pretty successful over the 10 years. We've had a uh, you know, some really good seasons, played for a couple of North halves, uh, what have you. And then the, obviously the last two years we played for the 6A state championship, got beat last year by Clinton uh, and Cam Akers. And then <laughs> yeah. we was able to this year to beat Starville uh, for the state championship. Yeah, that is awesome. Two years in a row. And the thing is, y'all were doing good anyway in uh, 5A. Um and then uh, you moved back up to 6A because I know when I played at Pearl, they were uh, 6A. And then I guess, uh, you know, attendance went down and we changed uh, changed to 5A. And then I'm just glad to see that go back up. How long has that been back to 6A? Uh, we, we've been in 6A. This was our third year okay. uh, in 6A, actually. And, you know, they, they just expanded to 6A. You know, I don't know how long it's been, 10 years maybe. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, but we had been a 5A for a long time. And, you know, even going back to when I was here the first time, you know, we would would go between 5A and 4A back and forth because we were always right there on that borderline, you know, enrollment-wise. But uh, we have been 6A for the past three years and we'll probably stay that for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, no matter where you are, 6A, 5A, 4A, I mean, there's good competition in Mississippi. No doubt. And expanding, I mean, y'all are playing teams in Louisiana, right? We did. We got invited to a a battle of the border over there in Shreveport and played Parkway, uh, Louisiana. And that was a great, you know, it was a great atmosphere and it was a great game. And, you know, I was really glad we got the opportunity to do that. Okay, okay. Um, so after you win state, do you get invited anywhere to go play like, uh, other regions or is it just, that's pretty much the end? That's that, you know, there was, there was always, you know, you always, uh, hear talk about playing somebody or something, but, you know, just the way it's set up when you win that last one, that's it, you know, cause then 
the following week, our kids are in all star games. Uh, okay. The following two weeks, you know, so it'd be hard to do that. Yeah, yeah, especially that, uh, what was it, the uh, Alabama Mississippi game or whatever? That's right. We play, they play the North South game uh, the week after the state championship game, and then the Mississippi Alabama game is the week after that. Wow. Okay. And plus, just I guess it was this year y'all moved up to uh, twelve games a season. We we could play twelve. There is a uh, you know there's a week in there where you can or cannot play, and we were going to have an open week. That's when we got invited to the Louisiana thing. So you know we played twelve straight before the playoffs started, which okay. was tough. You know, but we had an older team, so we were okay to do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. I see. How, uh, so you got a twelve-week season, but you mainly would play eleven games, but you can play that's twelve. Right. Okay. That's right. You can play twelve if you want to, but you know, most a lot of folks will play eleven. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you got some banged up kids, you know, you wanna wanna take that's that right. week off to get healthy. <laughs> um, that's right. Let's see. So, uh, state champs, sixteen and O. I mean, that's. So how many games in the playoff? Three? So it'd be two, uh... Four. Oh, it's four. Okay. Oh, yeah, 12, 60, yeah. Mm, I need to go back to school and add, learn how to... <laughs> <laughs> so 12 and then four games in the playoffs, and then, uh... And then, uh, well, three and then the play, and then the championship. Okay. That's right. All right. Let's see here. What kind of, uh... What kind of offense do y'all run? Well, we're a spread, you know, uh, I guess what you call a typical offense in 2018. You know, we're a spread, uh, inside zone, power counter, uh, you know, throwing, you know, a lot of RPOs off of that stuff. I mean, we're going to get in a bunch of different formations and, you know, we just kind of, we, we kind of tend to do what our personnel lends us to do. You know, we've had the past five or six years, we've had a really good, uh, Gap scheme running back, so we tended to stay more towards gap scheme, gap scheme stuff, uh, mm-hmm. and throw a lot of quick game, you know, a lot of screen. Uh, have been really good at quarterback, and you know, tried to well, for, for for many years we were under center triple midline outside gear, and I guess about four or five years ago we went to this newfangled spread stuff, and mm-hmm. you know, it's so much easier I think on the offensive lineman and. It's taken a lot of the thought processes off of them and just let them play. And, you know, I've really enjoyed it. When you're in, when, you know, with all the zone scheme stuff, you know, you're either covered or you're uncovered. With the gap scheme, you know, you either block down or you double back. And, you know, when you're under center, we were under center running a lot of option stuff. The rules could change based on what type of defense it was. You know, it was, it was always the rules were different on midline than it was outside veer and inside veer. I just thought it was, you know, uh, a whole lot more complicated to play up front under that scheme than it is under this scheme. You know, these guys catch this stuff uh, pretty easy, and we don't do as much stuff. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of throws, and there's a lot of the offense that happens off of, you know, the run game now. And it just, you know, if you can make it easier on the guys up front, you're going to be better off. Yeah. We tend to, we tend to do... You know, we try not to overcoach and do too much stuff. You know, we're going to be good at what we do and, and, you know, try to be as good as we can, you know, at our base stuff before we move on. You know, we're not going to be, you know, we're not going to take 25 plays until a ball game. You know, we're going to try to get really good at what we do, sell our kids on what we do. And, and then, you know, really the performing, you know, on Friday night is much more important than, you know, uh, how much stuff you got in or how much crap, how yeah. thick your playbook is. <laughs> Amen. Amen to that. <laughs> we think a lot alike. What kind of base defense y'all run? We're, we're a multiple 4-3. I mean, we, we base out of a 4-3, and, you know, we move a lot and, and, you know, try to play several different things on the back end. And, you know, at the end of the day, try to apply pressure you know, to the guy that receives the snap every time. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, we want to try to, you know, not not be a an all out blitz team, but we want to apply pressure and go get the ball. You know, I mean, we're yeah. we are multiple in 
you know, how we do that, but, you know, that's kind of what we based out of. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Um, any, uh, any kids going to some, uh, going to some good places yet this year, uh, college wise? You know, well, we had 29 seniors Whew. and we'll have a bunch of them get a chance to play more football. I mean, we've got a great junior college system in the state of Mississippi and, yeah. you know, thank God that we do because we have a lot of kids that'll get a chance to play there. Uh, you know, we've had, uh, our, we've got a wide receiver that's committed to Mississippi State, John Quarius Patterson. Uh, we've got uh, what what everybody or most folks in the state call the best player in the state, Tyler Knight. Has mm-hmm. several offers from a couple different places. You know, Louisiana, Lafayette, mm-hmm. uh, Stuckle, Arkansas, Northern Colorado, Jackson State, Alabama State. And it's got some other things going on. Uh, you know, we think something big could still happen with him and mm-hmm. uh we've got a couple other you know we've got a slew of them that's gonna play some junior college ball and get a chance to, to continue to grow and get bigger and have a chance to play bigger ball in uh two years oh yeah most definitely um and that's the cool thing and i try to tell the kids up here because we got one junior college in the, the state of ohio which is you know wow. crazy because uh california's got their own their own system because they got so daggum many, and then, right. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Mississippi's mixed in with you know everybody else across the country. But what do we got? What do y'all gonna have? 16, 15, 16, something around there. I think we there? got. We either got twelve or fourteen. I'm not sure. Okay, I was I interviewed uh, Coach Guthrie the other night from uh, Colin, and he was telling me he he couldn't remember right. either. But uh, you know the the best thing I like about Ju- uh, JUCO is uh, the fact that. If you qualify to go D one, but you don't get an offer and you go JUCO, you can play one year and go and transfer straight in and not lose a year of uh, eligibility, you know, or have to sit That's out. That's right. That's right. And then That's uh, right. some kids do that. Yeah, and you know, and then of course, if you don't qualify, you go and you go two years and you graduate, and then you might get be a walk on somewhere or might even get a scholarship That's right. somewhere. So. That's right. No doubt about it. You know, I've coached so many kids that, and it's not just them, it's their parents in their ear going, or a family member or somebody, hey man, you're D1. That's right. No, you know, you might be one day, but right now you're yeah. not. <laughs> That's right. I mean, you know, a lot of, a lot of these folks have to get to a Division One football game. If you go, you know, see what those guys look like, a lot of times you figure out, you know, what the problem is because there's a there's a there's a you know those are those are big guys that are playing out there on Saturday. Oh man, defensive line and offensive line. If you're not, I mean, if you're not six five and two eighty or bigger, you better be one hell of an athlete and the strongest son bitch to get That's on right. if you're under six five. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so no doubt about that and, and that's not just I mean you know of course you have shorter guys everywhere else on the field but I mean you right. you know I try to tell these kids uh, where I coached last year they were like oh yeah I'm strong I said how how many times can you lift uh, 225 oh about four times I said you better get that up closer to 25 ain't what? no doubt about that what I, no you no blah 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 and I was like yeah I said I coached D3 and we had kids that were lifting NFL type, but they would never go because they're too small, you know, but they were strong. Right. You know, 28, 32 times. I mean, tag gum, you know, that's right. for a running back. That's just, yep. that's unbelievable. <laughs> yep. I never got that no strong. <laughs> no, me neither. So, Pearl, 10 years. And I, you know, I was, I was reading something you had said on uh, Twitter one day. You said something about, you know, the greatest sport in the world was college football. Not to say, you know, I don't want you to say yay or nay, but I mean, any thoughts of you coaching college football one day? I don't know. I mean, that's man, that's such a different world. You know, those guys are, are you know, man, they they have to. They're, they're in season all the time. They're either in football season or they're in recruiting season. And, right. You know, it's just a totally different animal. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed the junior college league. You know, that that was that was really fun. You got just enough recruiting to, 
you know, to be fun, but it's not, yeah. you know, those guys. It's are not a lifestyle. Man, they are like, oh, it's dog eat dog, and it's a rough <laughs> world out there, you know. Uh, I think in, in today's society, you need to, you need to start out, you know, if you want to be a college coach, you need to start out as a college coach. You need to start out as a GA and work your way up, and yeah. you know, once you get. You know, your years in, it's hard. It'd be hard to jump into that league, you know. And now they've got rules that, you know, make it even harder than that because now they have to, you know, like if they hire me, you know, then they can't recruit Pearl for two years, you know. They're putting some really? of these rules into effect that actually hurt high school coaches. So, so uh, does that know, count things for, like that work against us as well. Yeah, does that count for JUCO too, or is it just – or is that just any other – I'm not sure about the JUCO. Okay. I'm not sure. I, I know it doesn't count for the JUCOs hiring, you know, high school guys. But now, if you know, if, if Alabama hires a JUCO coach, you know, I'm not sure. I would imagine they can't recruit that JUCO for two years. Okay. Okay. And if that's the case, that's going to hurt. You know, that's going to hurt the chances of those guys. Now, that may not be the case for some of your, you know, FCS and Division two schools. But right. You know, I know they they implemented some rules to. You know, and, and and that's because of recruiting. You know, they don't want uh, they don't want to place signing somebody. You know, hiring their coach just to sign the running back. You know, that they're trying to yeah, oh, do away with that. I got you. I got you. In other words, kind of like uh, if you wanted to take your running back with you, you used to could do stuff like that, but now you can't. Yeah. Okay, so it's kind of like, right. oh yeah, you can't, well, you can't, if you want my kid, you, you my take me as a coach. Job to, to get a third player. Yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Or if you do, and I guess you still can, but then you can't recruit that school for two years, so mm-hmm. you know that would knock out the player. So yeah. just, that that makes it really tough, you know, for high school guys. Well, to go coach college. <laughs> Leave it to the NCAA to come up with some damn rules. Good God. They got them. <laughs> yes, sir. They got yes, them. sir. Um, all right. Let's see. What um, what are you looking at? You lost 29. Uh, you're losing 29 seniors. Yep. What, um, what's your uh, junior and uh, sophomore class look like? You know, they're not bad. The junior class is, is real small, mm-hmm. uh, you know, but they've been around a bunch of, they've been around a bunch of winners for a long time. And, yeah. you know, the sophomore class is pretty good. Uh, our next, our next really, you know, talented class is, is our eighth graders. Uh, but, you know, next year will be a different, it'll be a totally different ball game, but it will be, you know, totally fun. I mean, it will be a challenge, you know, because we'll be breaking in so many new starters and, Mm-hmm. You know, it'll be such a challenge every Friday night that, you know, that's what we, you know, that's what we coach for, man. If, if you know, we can't win them all all the time, you know, obviously we won them all this year and it was really fun. But, you know, we're going to have to be really, really good next year and do the things that we need to be able to do to win football games. And that doesn't matter what grades you in or how big you are. You got to hang on to the football. You got to play great defense. You got to be good in special teams and, you know, it will be a challenge, but it'll be really fun. Yeah. Playing, I know, I know back in the day when I played, uh, we played Brandon the last game of the season. And when we, when y'all moved to uh, down from six to five and four, that kind of became the first game of the season, which kind of sucks because that was a huge rivalry. H- how is it to have right. it back at the last game of the season? That's great. You know, I mean, it's, it's, that's where it's supposed to be. And, you know, it makes it tough sometimes the first round of the playoffs because you come off of that, you know, that huge game. And sometimes the first round of the playoffs can be a challenge if you don't really get yourself ready to play. But that's where it's supposed to be, man. And then, like, you know, this year we had the region championship on the line that Friday night and, mm-hmm. you know, come down to an overtime game. You know, just that, it don't get much better than that, man. That's about as good as, as high school football you know, in the United States of America can get his Pearl Brandon overtime for the region championship. Oh my God, I know. I wish I could have seen that game. I, uh, um, of course, coached on Friday night, so I wasn't able to watch any. <laughs> Until y'all got to so the playoffs. And, uh, right. and and then, of course, then you got to pay for it through the Mississippi High School Athletic Association, right. blah, blah, blah. So, 
Anyway, um, maybe if uh, maybe if I'm not in the playoffs next year, hopefully I will be. But if not, make a trip down and watch a game. <laughs> I guarantee you. That'll be fun. Um, For sure. And yeah, going back to the college thing real quick. You know, I know that you, you know, you, you're what you're married and you got uh, how many kids you got? Got two. Two, okay, and uh, that's also hard um, because you will if you don't start before you have a family. Now, wife is a little different, but if you don't start before you have a family, that's really tough to jump in after you have a family when college because of. That's right. You're. Go ahead. You're a bunch of those guys that you know when they retire. They say they retire, you know, to spend time with their family, and they're, you know, they've missed a lot of that. And, you know, those guys do, man. They, they make a great living for their family, but they do sacrifice time, and, yeah. you know, that, that makes it really tough. Yep. Well, i tell you what, uh, <laughs> this past season, the high school I was with, we worked seven days a week. How about y'all? What do yep. y'all do? Y'all do seven? Uh, we 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 pretty much do. I mean, we don't. Saturdays are Saturdays are on their own, mm-hmm. but with huddle like it is now, everybody, you know, everybody's working from home, so at least they can be around their families. And then, right. you know, we do come in on Sundays and meet as a staff, and okay. so it is around the clock, you know, for sixteen to twenty weeks. That's wide open. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, that would have been fine if we did that, but we actually had to go to school seven days a week, which was. You know, we only did that 10, yeah. 10 weeks, but, uh, you know, that's right. But still, you know, it gets a little. Well, I'm a huge college football fan. And oh, yeah. I want my Saturdays. College football is being played on Saturday. Oh, yeah. We're going to be able to watch it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I definitely. That's one reason. That's probably the only reason I wouldn't want to co- coach college football is because like, then I couldn't watch it. But, hey, then I'd be there. I guarantee you. Know? you. I'd be there, that's though, right. so I guess that would help. <laughs> that's right. For sure. Uh, are y'all lifting right now? We do. We started back when we came back from Christmas, actually. Okay. Uh, you know, lifting and running and doing all the off-season stuff that I'm sure everybody else is doing. Now, are you mandatory with that? Or is it uh, how many guys do you have playing baseball, playing uh, soccer, playing lacrosse, you know, basketball, all that stuff? Yeah, we... We, if, if they go to baseball, they go to baseball. And their coaches, you know, run their program and work out and lift weights. And, okay. You know, if they go to basketball, they go to basketball. If, if, you know, our soccer guys are every other day, and you know, we just try to make sure that they're all doing something. And if they're competing, you know, with another sport and trying to help us win a state championship, then we're all happy for them. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the same way up here. What, um, how many... Do you, uh, how many do you have on the uh, roster for uh, high school? We're, we are normally right around 80. 80. You know, is, is what we'll coach on a normal season is about 80. We try to have 25 per class, you mm-hmm. know, to keep it around 75. Uh, I think this year we were 79, and that's about average. Okay. Uh, how many do you uh, have showing up for, uh, for weights during the off? You know, I mean, we probably have, on an average day, we're probably 50, you know, 60 of those kids. I mean, we're going to have five or six that play baseball. We're going to have five or six that uh, play basketball and, you know, between track and soccer, depending on what day they come. Mm -hmm. But we still have a lot of them in the program, you know, working out every day. That's awesome. That, man. That's big. <laughs> I haven't. Uh, we move all of our ninth graders. All of our ninth graders go into last block, you know, and they're in last block with us. So we move them up, and you know, so you have all of those guys too. <laughs> yeah, that's something you know. Back in the day, um, and I don't know if it's changed or not. See, y'all have blocks. Um, we don't really do blocks up here, um, but football was always played, what it, what was it, the last, I mean, not played, but practice, was the last, last two or last 
last class of the day or something like that, and then you went yeah, well, the last further? Mm-hmm. That's right. Okay, because here, I mean, do y'all still do that? Yeah, we're still last block. I mean, we got them, you know, our block is an hour, 40, 45, whatever it is, but we're last block every day. Okay, and but y'all run over that, but... But you still use that, yep. so see that's cool. Yep. Um, up here, man, it, you start about fifteen to thirty minutes after school's out. Yep. So you know, it's a little wow. Different. Wow, yeah, that's a little different for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. Well, uh, what's uh, what's your not prediction, but what are you thinking y'all going to do next year? You going to go 12 uh, again? I don't know, man. You going to try 12 games again? Are you <laughs> not sure? No, uh, we, uh, we, we we dropped out of the deal in street for We're going to take an open week. I know we're going to be young, and the front end of our schedule is loaded. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the likes of Warren Central, Madison Central, both of us ranking, you know, we're, 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 we're full up on the front end, so we're going to take an open week. Uh you know, and then get ready for region play. And then, you know, obviously we're going to try to win every one of them. Now, we're not going to be as experienced and, you know, we won't be as deep as we were. So, yeah. you know, that gets back to it'll be a it'll be a challenge. You know, it'll be, uh, you know, we're going to have to do things right to give ourselves a chance. Yeah. Um, that's a program that you mentioned has really stepped up since I remember back in the day was at Warren Central. I mean – they oh, really, yeah. they really brought it out, so that's good for them. Um, what's your quarterback situation look like? Because I know you're losing your quarterback. We do, and we've got a we've got a really good one uh, coming up. You know, uh, he's a, he'll be a, a junior, Gunner mm-hmm. Dennis. He's a sophomore right now. Okay. He's going to be really, really good. He's a bigger kid. You know, I don't know why, but we've been for the past ten years, for the most part, we've had small quarterbacks. And, this kid will be a little different from that. He's a big old kid that can absolutely sling it. So, you know, the quarterback position, although he'll be inexperienced and, you know, we'll have to because he plays baseball, mm-hmm. get him back this summer and fast track him, yeah. uh, you know, into the stuff. But he is, he's going to be a really good one. And, and, and I've always said, if you got a quarterback, you got a chance. Yeah. Well, as long as he doesn't play, the kids up here, they'll play baseball, which is fine, but then they play select ball during the summer, and you can't even keep right. them, you can't even get them to camp. I mean, or right. keep them in camp. It's ridiculous. But, uh, that's right. Anyway, well, I tell you what, good luck. I hope y'all, uh, I hope y'all go back to state and win again. Um, that'll well, we be sure awesome. Try. That'll be awesome. I'll definitely be keeping up. Um, so, uh, all right. Well, um, John, it's been great talking to you. And, uh, man, I sure appreciate it. We will, uh, cut it off right there. Well, there you go. This ends our show for the evening. Thanks to Coach Perry for joining us on Blevins Nation podcast. Remember, kids, wherever you go, there you are. I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, FuelTheJourney.org. Stop by and begin your own journey. I want to send a shout out to Fumblegate Podcast on Facebook. And also, go check out Jake Plummer and his podcast on Twitter.com backslash snakes takes. And of course, BlevinsNation.com. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, iTunes, Spotify, Google, that's Google Music. Thanks to all, and see you next week.